Welcome to Christ Supreme Ministry, the House of Restoration. We invite you to worship with us and receive this spirit-filled message as we hear from the Lord. God bless you as you listen, in Jesus' name. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome you to another Tuesday Bible study. Let us gather around our family, our friends. Let us let them know that it's time to learn the word of God. Let us gather around our family to sit and to be blessed. Let us rise up as we begin. Let's just go before God and just thank him for this new day. Thank him for the grace to see another Tuesday. Thank him for always watching over us. Let us thank him for the grace to even be here in our individual houses to be able to log on and to watch this Bible study. Let us give him the great, let us give him all the glory. Lord, we give you the glory and we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. We know it's not, we, we don't take this for granted, Lord. So we thank you. We return all the praise and all the honor to you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for watching over us from the beginning of the week. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all our family members. Thank you, Lord, for we are gathered together as a church. None of us are missing. We give you all the glory and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us go before him once again and ask him for his mercy. Let us pray that his mercy will cover us this evening. Even as we dwell in his presence to learn his word, let us pray that every hindrance that wants to block us from receiving his word will be removed in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you have mercy on us. Anything that we have done wrong in our words, in our, in our utterances, in our actions, in our thoughts. Lord Jesus, we pray that you have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Any sin that wants to block us from taking your word and for, uh, for it to be planted in our hearts, we pray, Lord, that you will have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, come and forgive us of our sins in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us commit today's Bible study into God's hands that the minister that will be, pre that will be teaching us today, let us pray that the Lord will speak through them in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, we commit your minister into your hands. We pray that you will use them mightily, Lord Jesus. Help them to speak in ways that we will understand in the name of Jesus. Help them not to speak of their own, but Lord, speak through them even as they stand here this evening to teach us in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we pray as their words will come, let it be planted into our hearts in the name of Jesus. And help us, Lord, to dwell on them, to remember them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lastly, let us commit us, uh, even us in our individual homes, let us cover us with the blood of Jesus. Those that are here at the church and those that are at home, let us pray that the blood of Jesus will cover us. The blood of Jesus will watch over us in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, just cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Even the internet that we're using, the connection that we're using, all that we're using today, the instruments, the microphones, even those that, are, that will be ministering today, let us commit them into God's hands. Let us pray that the Lord will cover them with the blood of Jesus. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we pray for your blood to cover us even as we are here. Lord, let your blood watch over us in the name of Jesus. We pray that the blood of Jesus will flow over all the connections that we're using, all the internet in the name of Jesus, that this Bible study will go smoothly in the name of Jesus. There shall not be any distractions of our hearts in the name of Jesus. We bind, let us bind every distraction in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you'll help us to focus on you, focus on the word that is coming today, and let us have a good time in your presence learning about you, learning more of your word in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you all the glory and we thank you. Thank you once again for this opportunity. We give you all the glory, Lord. Even as we praise your name, Lord Jesus, let our praises be acceptable in the name of Jesus. Let your name be lifted high in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for you are a wonderful God. You are an awesome God. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Let's praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessings and glory. Wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor. Power and might be unto the Lord forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Let's sing the glory. 
God the glory, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being our God. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory, Lord. But thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for you're an awesome God. Hallelujah. Yes. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy.
God is good all the time. He's a faithful God. He's a wonderful God. And today we are here to say thank you, Lord. I welcome everyone joining us this evening for today's Bible study. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. Let's call our family members together so that we'll learn from the table of the Lord. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we are here again. We are here to learn from you. We ask that we open our hearts and you speak to us. Teach us your word this evening in the name of Jesus. I cover this meeting with the blood of Jesus and I yield myself unto you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. Come and teach us from above. Send your word to me. Send your word through me. Let it come with power. Let it come with authority. Let it come with fulfillment. Through your word tonight, Lord, let there be salvation. Let there be restoration. Draw us closer to you and empower us to walk in your authority. Blessed be unto you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I just want us to praise the Lord with this song. Let's just appreciate the Lord. Master of the universe, conqueror and king. Master of the universe, Emperor always, you are the king over the qualities, you are the Lord over powers, you are the head over rulers, you are the master, master of the universe. Master, master of the universe, conqueror and king, you are the master of the universe, emperor of peace, you are the head over principalities, you are the head the master of the universe Hallelujah. you are the lord that has power over all every authority comes from you and you have given that authority unto us that is why we are here this evening to learn about the authority Thank that you have given unto us tonight holy spirit open our hearts open our hearts let us receive from you let your word drop into the fertile ground of our hearts so that we'll be able to stand in that position of authority that you have placed us as your children. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I cover this meeting with the blood of Jesus. And I declare that only the Lord Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. Devil, you are a failure over our meeting, over our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
the Lord is good. I said the Lord is good all the time. Yes, we started a new uh, series of study two, Sunday, uh, two Tuesdays ago. And today we are going to continue. We already did parts one and two. This is the third part of believer's authority. Believer's authority. In our first um, study, we learned what um, authority is. We declared, uh, we, we taught ourselves that authority is the power to rule, power to make decisions, power to instruct, power to direct. And, that, and we also learned about the fact that God is the ultimate authority. Every authority comes from God. Is the one that, that has the old authority. Any other power, any, author, any other authority, they are under the authority of God. Whether the authority of anything, it's of God. Hallelujah. And another fact that we learned is that authority is delegated. Authority is delegated. If authority comes from God, how come we have authority from government, from man, or from any institution? It's because the authority has been delegated to them by God. So authority is delegated. Authority is delegated. The first one, God is the ultimate authority. And the last one is that authority is delegated. Last Tuesday, we looked at the recipes for effective authority. What are those things that we need to have for us to effectively use our authority as children of God? And the number one thing that we studied was subjection. Subjection. That is, anyone who wants to effectively exercise his authority as a believer has to subject him or herself unto the authority of the Lord Jesus. You, now, you need to learn how to be obedient, how to be subjected to the authority of God and every other authority around you. Anyone that fails to subject himself to authority can never rule as an authority or uh, someone of, of authority. So as a child of God, if you fail to subject yourself to the authority of God and every other authority, there is no how you can exercise your authority as a child of God. Another point that we looked at was that uh, we need to be in obedience. We need to be in obedience to the authority of God. We need to live a life of obedience. Obedience. Anyone that fails to live in total obedience, not have obedience, not partial obedience, not 20% obedience, but 100% obe obedience, total obedience, perfect obedience. Anyone that has this kind of obedience will effectively exercise his authority over all. Over all. Because that's what God has given us authority over. He has given us authority over all. So for us to effectively exercise our authority as children of God, then we have to live in obedience, total obedience to every authority, total obedience to every commandment, total obedience to every instruction. Another point that we looked at is that anyone, to, if anyone that wants to effectively exercise his authority must live an upright life. You have to learn to live right. You have to learn to live a life of holiness. You have to learn to live to a life that showcases the glory of God. You have to learn to live a life that, that shows the nature of Christ. Living an, a, a, an upright life. That will empower you to effectively exercise your authority as a child of God. Another point that we look at is consistent studying and studying of the word of God. Consistent reading, studying, meditating on the scripture. Not someone who occasionally read the Bible. Not someone who, who, who read the Bible when it feels like. No. But someone who takes time, who has a consistent time to study, to read and study and meditate on the word of God. Those are those people that will effectively exercise their authority as children of God. Consistent studying of the word. It is very important in we, in us, 
as, as, as effectively exercising the power, the authority that God has given to us as his children. And the last point that we looked at was uh, is enforcing the scripture, enforcing the scripture, making the word of God to come to life, you know, working according to the will of God, according to the word of God, bringing the word of God to life in our lives. Praise the Lord. When you are praying, you pray with the word of God. You pray with power in the word of God. You stand on it. That those are the things that makes the power of God to come to effective in uh, to, to, to come to effect in our lives. But when we do not even know the word, how can we enforce it? How can we recall the word of God when we need to do to do it? I pray that the, the, all these points will be effective in our lives. They will be alive in us so that we'll be able to walk the kind of world that God has prepared for us as his children. God wants us to live in authority. He, uh, he wants uh, that his original plan for us is to live in dominion, to live in, in, in do, to be, to have dominion over all, to have dominion over all, to rule over. That is the, the plan of God for his children. But because we do not put all those things in, in, in place, we don't allow them in our lives. All those things are taken away. The blessing that we have as children of God. Today, I pray that even after today's uh, meeting, every one of us, we examine our lives and we try to make adjustments where we need to. So that our lives will be what God has ordained it to be in the name of Jesus. So today, by the special grace of God, we are going to see the exposition that Paul gave to us as children of God that opened our hearts to eternal inheritance that we have in Christ Jesus. And we are going to take our text from the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. We're, not, we're going to read from verse 1 to 20. Ephesians chapter 1, 1 to 20. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. We are reading from the book of Ephesians chapter 1, 1 to 20. Ephesians 1, 1 to 20. And I'm on verse 4 now. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame, before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. If you can uh, put the Bible passage on the, on the screen, please. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1 to 20. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1 to 20. Now we are on verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Verse 7 now. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In name you also trusted. After you heard the word of trust, of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. 
verse 15. Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Praise the Lord. This is uh, what Paul did for the saints in Ephesus. He blessed the name of the Lord for, the, for, the, for, for those people who have who are, who are given their lives to Jesus, who have surrendered their lives to Jesus in, in, in Ephesus. And he was trying to open their heart to what God has done, tell, trying to let them know that what they are enjoying now is not something that's just come to be. It's something that God himself has planned even from the beginning of the world, of, 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 of the house. It is something God has ordained for every believer. It is something God has planned. It's not, it's not a, 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 a thing, a th something that God just thought of. Even for every generation that is going to be on earth, God has ordained them. As long as they give their lives to Jesus, they are ordained to be so. And he opened their heart to let them know that, look, what you have is not something you should take lightly. It's a, it's a very significant thing. Something you have to, to cherish all your life. Something you need to know to spend your whole life on. To make sure that nothing take it away from you. May the Lord help us even as we open our, as we continue with this uh, exposition today in the name of Jesus. Paul's exposition of eternal inheritance of spiritual blessing. Believers authority part three. I'm going to go to the outline. So in this passage, Paul exhibited one of the obligations and rights that believers have toward one another. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 11, Apostle Paul admonished us to encourage and build up one another in Christ, just as we see him did for the believers in Ephesus. The, it is the, the, the right, the obligation of every believer to encourage one another. We are, live, we are together to help one another, to encourage one another, to guide one another, to advise one another. And when we see anybody doing well, let's appreciate them. And that's what Paul did for the Christians in Ephesus. Paul had a unique encounter with the Lord, which gave him privilege to have deep knowledge of numerous blessings that is available, blessings that are available for those who follow Christ wholeheartedly. Because of the, the, the kind of relationship that Paul had with, with the Lord Jesus, he was able to know that the relationship between God and his children is not a joke thing. It's not something that one should take any, any out. It's a serious thing because it has a lot of blessing in it. In, verse, in verses 3 to 6 of the text that we read, Paul says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. He was saying that God has blessed us. He has reserved a lot of spiritual blessings for his children. And that those blessings have been there, right? Even from the, before the world came to be. He continues, he says that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his, of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. It is the will of God for us to be holy, to be holy, to be sanctified without blame. Because of 
what he has in plan for us. If God wants us for his own pleasure, he, he set apart the believers just for him by his grace, for us to showcase his glory. In, the verses, in these verses, Paul was praising God for how he predestined the believers in Ephesus to be, to be his adopted children through their faith in Christ Jesus. He informed them that God had blessed them with every blessing in heavenly places that, in, that is in Christ. They are blessed. Every believer is blessed, is already been endowed with spiritual blessings through our Lord Jesus Christ. That is, in Christ, they are fully accepted and found a, a love that is higher and deeper than they could ever imagine. It is only in Christ Jesus that we can find love, real love, unconditional love. And because it is that love that made him to come and died for our sins. Paul told them that the Holy Spirit will help them to have a deep knowledge and understanding of the uniqueness of the love of Christ. That is, and that this knowledge will enable them to experience the fullness of God. That is every benefit that is available to every genuine child of God. So it's only when we have a deep understanding of, of the love of Christ. That is when we can really appreciate the love that Jesus Christ has for us. That is when we can really see those benefits that we have in Christ Jesus. Apostle Paul recognized why it is important for them to know who they are in Christ and what they stand to gain as children of God. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom and in all your gettings get understanding proverbs 4 7 wisdom is the principal thing get wisdom in all your getting get understanding what am i saying here one thing is to have on this to have knowledge another thing is for you to have a deep understanding of the knowledge that you have it is the understanding that propels one into applying the knowledge that you have into, into use. When we have a clear understanding of a matter, it makes a great difference. It is the understanding that of, 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 a, of a matter that helps you to know what to do and what not to do about that knowledge. If you don't have a deep understanding of a knowledge, then that knowledge can be, it can be a waste in your hand. That knowledge cannot take, cannot be, bring any benefit to you. Many believers does not have a clear understanding of their worth as children of God, which is why many are not living up to their potentials as children of God. In order for the believers in Ephesus to have access to and, to and enjoy the full benefit of the eternal inheritance of spiritual blessings available in Christ, Paul decided to let them know how much they worth in Christ Jesus and what qualifies them as children of God. So today, Paul's message is being directed to us as believers in Christ Jesus. It's telling us, it's telling us for us to also to know that God had prepared, pre-planned our salvation and he has prepared a, a lot of blessings for us that are in Christ Jesus. When we have that understanding of this, that will help us to place ourselves where we belong in order for us to, to be able to exercise the blessing that, and to enjoy the blessing that God has prepared for us. When we know who we are in Christ, we'll be able to appreciate the numerous blessings that God himself has prepared for us and we'll enjoy it to the fullest. In our study today, we are going to examine those factors that qualifies us for the eternal inheritance of spiritual blessing that we have in Christ as believers. When we have clear understanding of this, then we'll be empowered to exercise our spiritual authority better and in full capacity. What are those things that qualifies us for salvation? What are those things that God has put together 
for our salvation. Those are the things that we want to see today. The exposition. The exposition. It is the, the, a, a comprehensive description and ex explanation of how we become children of God. A comprehensive description. That's what we want to see today. How do we become children of God? What are those things that God has put in place for us to have our salvation? And the first thing we want to, we, we, we are going to look into this. So the, what the spiritual blessing? What are those spiritual blessings that God has given to us? This refers to divine privileges and resources available for believers in Christ Jesus. What are they? The resources, the divine privileges and resources that are available for us in order for us to become children of God. The first one we want to look at is that is predestination. I've been saying this since we started this teaching. Predestination. The phrase, having predestined us. That's what the Bible says. Having predestined us. What does it mean? It means that everyone who accepted Jesus has been pre-planned to be. It's something God has planned right from the beginning. That is, it is an appointed plan, a guaranteed destiny for every believer, both born and unborn. It's a pre-planned plan. It is already, it's made ready for even for our unborn generation. We are all anyone who can you know, accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior is being predestined to be so. It's a pre-planned program, even for our unborn children. Let's quickly look into the book, uh, the book of Isaiah. Please, I want everyone to get your Bibles and begin to open them. Isaiah, we're going to read from chapter 45. Isaiah 45, I read from 12 to 13. Isaiah 45, 12 to 13. says, I have made the earth and created man on it. I, my hands, stretch out the heavens and all their hosts. I have commanded. I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his, all his ways. He shall build my city and let my exiles go, go free, not for price nor reward, says the Lord. This is the word of God. He says, I have raised, I have made the earth and created man on it. God is the one that created everything. He, had, he made the man. He created us into it. He said, I, my hands, stretch out the heavens and all their hosts I have commanded. He has made everything. He, he has done all. The work of God is a finished job. He did everything ready. Verse 12 says, I have made the earth and created man on it. He made everything. And in verse 30, verse 13, he says, I have raised him up in righteousness. See, he didn't say that I'm going to raise men up in righteousness. Everyone who is a child of God, God has already ordained you to be so. You are raised up in righteousness. I will direct all his ways. God will direct your ways. It is not now that he's telling you. He, is, he has done that. So you, it's you, just for you to walk in the path that he has made for you. He shall build my city and let my exiles go. That's what God has ordained us to be. To build the city. To encourage others that are in Christ Jesus. To make sure that we, all of us, we are walking in, in the way of the Lord. That is what God has done for us. Praise the Lord. Also, the book of John. John chapter 15 verse 16. John chapter 15 verse 16. John 15, 16. Jesus Christ says, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. I have called you friends for all things that I had from my father, I have made known to you. We are children, we are friends of, of God. He, we are no longer his servants. We are his friends. The Bible says we are joint ears with the Lord Jesus. So he made known, he, he revealed to us the mind of Christ. This is what the Lord Jesus has done. 
see how, when, when was the time he was on earth and compare it till now. He has done it. So anyone that is even born, as the Lord tarries, if anyone born, born in 100 years time, this work has been done unto them. The word of God is still relevant to them. Also, the book of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 from 28 to 30. Romans chapter 8 from 28 to 30. Romans 8, 28 to 30. Say, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. For those who are the called, all things work together for those who love God. And those who are the called, those that he has predestined to be his own, those that he has set apart for his own, uh, for his own purpose, all things work together for them. He called you out for his purpose. Apostle Paul in his introduction says that he has been called by the will of God. So you too, you have already been called as long as you are a child of God. You have been called for his purpose. You have been called by his will. And the last uh, passage you want to check out here is 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 1, we read verse 2. 1 Peter 1, 2. 1 Peter 1, 2 says, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. See, you have been elect. This is Peter writing here. You have been elect according to the foreknowledge. It is not an accident that you are born again. It is not a, 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 your own decision. God has ordained it. He has foreknew it. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, you are elected for his purpose. To the, to, you know, in sanctification of the Spirit, he has sanctified your spirit. So it is now left for you to allow the word of God to work on you. To make you all as he has desired it, as he has designed it to be, right from the beginning. So that is the, the, one of the, the spiritual blessings that we are enjoying in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Don't forget we are looking at the, those, the spiritual blessings that are available for children of God. And those things that has qualified us as children of God. And if you know this, if you have a deep understanding of this, this is what we enable us. To be able to exercise our authority in Christ Jesus. And the second one we want to look at is acceptance. Acceptance. Everybody wants to be accepted. Everybody wants to know to, to feel that, to have that sense of belongingness. And this is what Jesus Christ has given us. This is what God has given to all his children. We are being accepted into the family of God. Only by the grace of God. It is not by our work so that no man will boast about it. No. We have not done anything to qualify us for being accepted into the family of God. Nothing in our lives. Most times I look at myself and you know, see what God is doing in my life. I look at myself and I, I, do, I just say, God, I don't know what I have done to deserve this. There is nothing good enough for me to deserve anything good from God. But because of his own purpose. Because of his, or, or, of his own plan for my life. Because of his own name. He is doing what he has prepared, what he, he, has, he has predestined to do. He accepted me. He accepted you into his family. It is not by our work. So that no man will boast of anything. No, there is no child of God that has nothing to, to boast of, of being a child of God. Except the grace. Except the grace. That is the grace. That is the only thing that made us to be accepted as his children. That is the only thing that qualifies us as a member of the family of God. 
Let's see what, 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 what uh, we have in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, I'll read from verse 9 to 10 and then verse 13. Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, all you need is to believe. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord. And he says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Can you see the mystery? The mystery of salvation. Mystery of salvation. Believing in your heart. Believing in your hearts. Confess with your mouth. And just call on the name of the Lord. L release yourself completely unto him. That's what qualifies you for acceptance into the family of God. That is what makes you to be called a child of God today. Also in the book of Ephesians, our text that we read, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith and that, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. For by faith you have been saved through faith and not and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god for us to be saved is the gift of god it is the gift of god it is only by grace by grace by grace what brings that grace nobody can know but because of his plan pre-planned is for new for knowledge he has for new it he has planned it regardless of who we used to be god has planned our salvation and he has accepted us to be part of his family praise be to the lord almighty let's go to the book of john john chapter 6 verse 20 uh, 37 john 6 37 john chapter 6 verse 37 John 6, 37. The Bible says, this is the word of Jesus. Say, all that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. What was Jesus telling us here? That everyone God has predestined to be his child, they will come to him. They are his. And as you are the Lord Jesus, you belong to the Lord. He says he will not cast you away. He will not, you know, turn his face away from you. He will always be there for you. Because the God the Father has given you to him. You have accepted him as your Lord and Savior. So you are qualified to be part of the family of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't forget we are looking at the spiritual blessing. That the, those, those spiritual blessings that, that we have in Christ Jesus. And we, are, we have already looked at predestination. The second one we just finished looking at is acceptance. Now we are going to the third one. Redemption. Redemption. We are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus Christ. He shed his blood as remission for the forgiveness of our sin. According to the riches of his, of his grace, we received forgiveness because of the love of Christ for us and, gave, and that he gave himself for us. Hallelujah. God, Jesus Christ loved us. He gave his life as a remission for our sins. He made himself an atonement for our sins. He shed his blood on the cross of Calvary to pay for our sins. See? The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there, is, there cannot be a remission of sin. In those days, they used to kill animals just to take away the guilt of their sins. But Jesus Christ came. He gave him his whole soul for the 
remission of the sin of the whole world. So this is a, a, a blessing that we can't compare anything with. Hallelujah. He made himself as a sacrificial lamb for us. Because he died for us, that qualifies us for heaven. That qualifies us for all the blessing, all the, the, the authority that Jesus Christ himself has. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. Ephesians chapter 1. Sorry, let's, let's open to um, Galatians chapter 2 20. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Galatians 2 20. Galatians 2 20. Say, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. See, this is Paul spoken, that he has been crucified with Christ. That on the day that Jesus Christ died, he too was, he, he was crucified with him. He was nailed to the cross with him. And the life that he was now living, as at the time he wrote this, he is like he was living a borrowed life. And because of that, he cannot just use that life anyhow. Because in that life is no longer his. He's living the life given to him in Christ Jesus. And same thing for every, every one of his, of his children today. This is one of the verse I love so much. The day God opened my understanding to have, a, to have an understanding of this, uh, this verse, my life turned around. I began to see myself as a new person, a unique person in Christ. Someone who was dead and rose with Christ Jesus. The life that I am living now, I always say it is different from the life that I used to live. And that is what born again is. If you say you are a child of God and the, trace, the traces of the things you used to do, they are still in you. Then your, your salvation is questionable. Praise the Lord. For you to show that you've been redeemed, there must be a difference in what you used to be and what you are now. Of in what in who you used to be and who you are now, you must have that realization that you are your 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 original person, your original self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer that original person that is living, but Christ that lives in you. You have given up your old life. You have given up your old nature. You have taken over, taken up the life of Christ, the nature of Christ. And that is the life you are living now. Because of that, you can no longer yield yourself to the flesh. You can no longer yield yourself to self. Self should have no power over you anymore. This is what the redemption of Christ Jesus has done in our lives. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Galatians 3, 13. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of law, having become a cause for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on, the, on a tree. Christ has redeemed us. He has purchased us with his blood. He has set us free from the curse of law. The curse of law has no power over us anymore because Jesus Christ has purchased us with his blood. He has washed away all our sins. Those things that the, the enemy can lay claim on in our lives, those things that the enemy can accuse us of before the Lord, Jesus Christ has, has removed it by his blood. He made himself cursed for our sake. So therefore, we can no longer go back to those things again. We can no longer go back to those things that qualify us to be punished under the law. Hallelujah. 
I pray God Almighty will give us that understanding that we need tonight in Jesus' name. Let's open to Titus chapter 2 verse 14. Titus chapter 2 verse 14. The book of Titus. Titus chapter 2 verse 14. Say, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. He gave himself for us. That's Jesus Christ. He gave himself for us. He released his all for us. In order for us, that he, he, just that he would redeem us from every lawless deed. He will redeem us from every, 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 everything that, is, that are ungodly. He will redeem us. He has redeemed us from things that are not good, that are not upright. He, he cleansed us and purified us for himself. He set us apart for himself, for his own purpose. He made us to be his own special people. In order for us to be zealous, to be zealous for, for good works, to be prepared to do good works, to love to do good. To love, to live right. That's what this passage is telling us. So we, we, we are unique. We are special. We cannot afford to live our lives anyhow. That will amount to us nailing Jesus Christ to the cross in the second time. And where would that take us? It will rob us of the blessing, the spiritual blessing that God has given unto us. It will rob us of the, uh, the, 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 the power, the authority that we have in Christ Jesus. That is when we, we will pray and our prayer will not be answered. That is when we will, we, will, we will say a thing and it will not come to pass because the Bible says that you shall declare a thing and it shall be established. But when we, when we go back to those things of the world, there, is no, there will not be power in the word of our mouth. God has planned it, he has did it in a way that when we speak, our word will carry power. Our word will come to pass. That is the authority that we have in Christ Jesus. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established for you. Whatever you lose on earth, it shall be losing in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. That is the authority that God has given to us. But when we allow things that we say we are no longer doing when we allow them into our lives when we allow those things when we when we allow the devil to lure us back to the world back to the flesh then we are we are we are trading off our authority in christ jesus what does first peter verse chapter 1 verse 18 to 9 to 19 says first peter first peter chapter 1 we we'll read from 18 to 19. First Peter 1, 18 to 19. It says, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, like silver or gold, from your aimless conduct, received by tradition for your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spots. See, we are not redeemed by corruptible things we are not redeemed by the things of this world we are not redeemed by silver or gold no but we are redeemed by incorruptible things by the precious blood of the lamb by the precious blood of jesus christ has a lamb without blemish and without spots of course jesus christ came to the world, he lived without sin. He lived without no blame. That's, why, that's what qualifies his blood to redeem us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the, the blessing that we have in Christ Jesus is so great, so wonderful, so expensive that we cannot trade anything with it. I want to encourage you as a child of God, please, Know who you are. Know who you are. That is the, the, the essence of this teaching tonight. 
you are not redeemed by a physical thing. You are not redeemed by corruptible things. You are redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. The last one we want to look at today is obtained inheritance. Sorry, yeah, obtained inheritance. What are those inheritance that we have obtained in Christ Jesus as his children? And they are into two. The first one is you are saved for the praise of his glory. The inheritance that we have, ob we have obtained in Christ Jesus is that number one, we are saved for his praise. We are saved to the praise of his glory. You are created to bring glory to God. The essence of our creation, that is, our, our, our being, our being saved, is for us to glorify the name of God. Our inheritance in Christ is to live for his glory, to live to please him, to live for him to be exalted in our lives. Thank God for our creed in Christ's supreme ministry. That Christ must be honored in my life daily. There's a reason for that creed. The creed is to remind us of who we are in Christ. The creed is to always caution us that no, there are some things I cannot just subject myself to. Even though things, a lot of things are there free for me that I can choose to be or I can choose to do. But it is not everything that is accepted into my life as a child of God. And it's all because of my inheritance in Christ Jesus. My inheritance is to live to praise God. My inheritance is to live to glorify the name of God. My inheritance is to live just to please him. It is the will of God for me to glorify him. God wants us to glorify him in everything that we do. Our creed says that in our, in our thoughts, in our thoughts, in our actions, in my interest, in my attitude, I just want to please God. I just want to honor him. I just want to exalt him. I want to show his supremacy. That is the desire of God for his children. Let's open our Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. It says, therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Whether you drink or you eat, do all, whatever you are doing, do all to the glory of the Lord. Do all to the glory of the Lord. Whether you are sleeping, whether you are watching TV, what you are watching in the TV, does it glorify God? While you are on your phone and you go to social media, everything that you are doing there, does it glorify God? When you sit down like this and you are thinking about stuff, what you are thinking about, does it glorify God? What you put down you want to eat, does it glorify God? Because maybe we don't know that we can even sin in the way we eat. Our eating habit can make us sin. It can lead us against, it can make us do things against the will of God. Because if you know your body and you know that what you put together you want to eat does, will bring trouble to your body. Then you are not doing it to glorify God. The Bible says your body is the temple of the living God. That you have been given by God. You are not of your own. That's what the Bible says. That's why whatever you want to do with your body must glorify God. The dressing you are putting on, does it glorify God? What you are drinking, and that thing that you say you are, you, you are smoking, does it glorify God? Always remember, your being alive and your being saved is to glorify the name of the Lord. Anything that will bring, that will make you to abuse your body does not glorify God. So you need to abstain from it. Don't abuse yourself. Your life is to glorify the name of the Lord. Let's check um, Psalm 50 verse 23. 
Psalm 50, verse 23. Psalm 50, 23. Psalm 50, 23. Says, whoever offers praise glorifies me. And to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. Whoever offers praise glorifies God. When you praise God with all your heart, with all your being, you are glorifying God. You are showcasing the glory of God. That is what he created you for. And also the book of 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians, we read from, uh, we read chapter 1, verse 12. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 12. It says that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything about you must glorify God. God must be glorified in you. Praise the Lord. Always know, have it at the back of your mind that anything you have to do must be to his praise, must be to his glory. And you, you yourself have to be glorified in God. Hallelujah. People must look into your life and say, wow, God is wonderful. Look at this woman. See the way she's living her life. I just like her. I just like the way she conducts herself. You know, people must look into your life and see the glory of God in it. People must look at you, you know, see your, the, your attitude, the way you carry things, the way you love people, the way you sacrifice and say God is wonderful. That's what it means that you in him, you be glorified in Christ. When you do everything to glorify God, then people will see the glory of God in your life. Hallelujah. Do not forget that is the essence of your living. That is the essence of your salvation. John 15 verse 8. John chapter 15 verse 8. John 15 8. John 15 8. Say, by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. That's another way that God can be glorified in our lives. When we bear fruit. When our lives is preaching the gospel. When people through our conduct comes to know Christ. Praise the Lord. That's all he wants. That we may show forth the glory of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. Those people he has you know, sanctified and set apart for himself. So when we begin, when we, when, we, when we live our life in a way that people see God in us and they come to life, then we are be, God is being glorified in our lives. And that is how we are going to you know, be able to, to effectively exercise the, the, the authority that God has given to us as his children. Philippians chapter 1 verse 11. Philippians chapter 1 verse 11. He says, being filled with the fruit of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Being filled with the fruit of righteousness. Our lives must be full with the fruit of righteousness. Live a righteous life. Live your life to glorify God. Let everything about you be to his glory. Let it showcase Christ. Let the mind of Christ be in you. The Bible says that we should love. When it, love covers it all. The love of Christ in our heart will propel us to do things that we ought to do as children of God. Because we love God, we don't want to do anything that will offend him. Because we love God, we don't want to sin. We don't want to, to walk in the, in the way that will not glorify God. We don't want to, to associate ourselves with things that are not of God because of the love of Christ in us. When we do this, then we'll be able to, you know, to exercise the authority that God has reserved for us as his children. 
But when we, go, when we engage in secret sin, let me tell you, this will take us nothing. We will not be able to decree a thing and it will be established. No way. That's why it's, it appears as if believers have no power these days. We have power. We have authority. And the authority we have is so great. It's, it's so, so mighty. It is incomparable with every other authority. Because every other, other authority bows to the authority in Christ Jesus. So if we know who we are and we know what we are carrying, we will set ourselves apart for the Lord. We will be where God has put us as his children. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. 1 Peter 4, 11. It says, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is what we are saying. Every dominion is unto the Lord. And if you want to do anything in the name of God, do it with the ability that God has given you. No flesh should be allowed in whatever you do. Anything we do carnally, anything we do in the flesh, it can never glorify God. Flesh and the spirit are never, they are not friends, they can never be friends. They are two parallel lines that can never meet. So whatever you are doing as a child of God and as a child who wants to walk in authority must glorify the name of God, must be to the praise of his name, must showcase the nature of Christ. That's all we need as his children. And the last one under obtained inheritance is that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit. The sealing of the Holy Spirit upon us is the mark of God's possession over our lives. It's a mark on us that this one belongs to Christ. This one is a child of God. It's God's title of ownership over his children. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit. We are not empty. We are not open. We are, it's like we are, we are not open. We are not exposed. Let me use that word. You have a mark upon your life. You have a covering. When devil says those, the mark of the Holy Spirit on you, he runs. But when we are not what God wants us to be, devil will just be playing with our lives. And there is no how we'll be able to exercise the, the, the authority that God has given to us. Praise the Lord. The text that we read, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 to, uh, to 14. Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. It says that in him you also trusted and you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory? Holy Spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance in Christ. When the Holy Spirit is seen in you, <laughs> no evil can touch you. No evil can come near you because the mark is already there. Holy Spirit gives God that title of ownership over our lives. And anyone that goes about with the Holy Spirit, he's an overcomer. He's a person of authority. Praise the Lord. Let's quickly go to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 to 22. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, we read 21 to 22. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 21 to 22. It says, Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. See, God himself 
is the one who has established us in himself. And he has given us that seal of the Holy Spirit, which stands as our guarantor. Is the guarantee that we belong to Christ. But it's a pity today that we don't even appreciate that Holy Spirit. We don't, rec we don't acknowledge that he's there. And when we don't acknowledge his presence, how can we recognize him? How can we appreciate him? How can we work with the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is there to help us, to guide us, to teach us, to protect us, to keep us away from trouble. He's your guarantor. It's a guarantee of God upon your life. It reminds God that this one belongs to me. It shows that you belong to the Lord. Let's learn to walk with the Holy Spirit. Let's learn to yield unto him. When we constantly yield to the power and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we can never miss it. The authority that we have in Christ Jesus will be effective in our, in our lives. Praise the Lord. What about 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. 2 Corinthians 5, 5 says, Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee, saying the same thing. Holy Spirit is a guarantee, is a mark of ownership of God upon our lives. You do not belong to yourself. You belong to God. You belong to God Almighty. He owns you. He owns you. And that's why we have to do everything possible to live for his glory. In order for us to, you know, to establish his authority here on earth. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 9 verse 4. Revelation chapter 9 verse 4. Revelation chapter 9 verse 4. It says, they were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing, or any tree, but only those, those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. See, anyone who do not have the seal of God upon their foreheads, they are doomed. They are doomed. They are banned for, 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 for consumption of death. They are banned for destruction. Make sure that your seal, the seal of God upon your life, is not, you don't lose it. It's a guarantee for you. Hold on to it. And the last Bible passage we want to see today is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Ephesians 4, 30. It says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. By whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Don't make him hungry. Don't make him hungry. Listen to him. Give him a chance in your life. Let him direct your path. The Bible says he will teach us all things. He will remind us of things that we need to know. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. He's there to teach. Is there to guide. Is there, is there to correct us. Is even if we need to be scolded, he's always there. As long as you allow him. When he scolds you, he helps you not to come back to the right path. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't, don't make him silent. Don't silence him in your life. Don't shut him up in your life. Let him be alive in you always. Don't allow your desire to, 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 to take over you to the extent that you will not allow the Holy Spirit to guide you on the right path. God knows our weaknesses and that's why he gave us Holy Spirit to help us, to strengthen us when we are weak, to guide us when we are missing it, to draw us back when we are going astray. Allow the Holy Spirit to do his work in you and you will never miss it in the name of Jesus. We thank God for what we are able to do today. This is the end of our, 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 our teaching today. Exposition to those spiritual blessings that we have in Christ Jesus as put together by Paul. This will help us to really know what qualifies us as children of God and what are those blessings, the, the blessings that we have in Christ Jesus. I pray that the Holy Spirit 
will help us this evening. It will open our hearts. It will open our eyes of understanding and will give us that deep understanding of what we have learned today so that it will empower us to exercise our authority as children of God in Jesus' name. You have, if you are here this evening and you have heard me and you have not given your life to Jesus, I am sorry. This might not work in your life. You need to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. You need to be born again. You need to ask the Lord to forgive you your sins and come, come to him, forsake your old life, and let him redeem you. Let the blood of Jesus make you his own. Let it wash, it, wash you away. Let, let it wash you clean and make you, to qualify you for his, as his child. If you want to make this decision, let us pray. Say, Lord Jesus, I realize myself as a sinner today. I come unto you. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. Let your blood cleanse me and make me your own. Today I forsake all my sins. And I ask that the Holy Spirit will come unto me. Holy Spirit, be my guide. Make me to be for the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. Write my name in the book of life. And help me to live a life that will glorify you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please, if you have prayed that prayer with me, you can reach out to us through um, info2020 at Christ Supreme Ministry. Uh, sorry, info2020 at Christ Supreme.ca. Info2020 at Christ Supreme.ca. Your salvation is very important to us. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And if you are here, you, have, you are a child of God and you have listened to this. Maybe you did not know this before. Please go back to this teaching. Go and listen to it again. And let it sink into you. Let it redirect your path. Let it reestablish you on where you have to be as his child of God. And the power of God, the authority of God in your life will be effective in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. It's time for our offering. Praise the Lord. Please, you, if you want to, you, you can give your offering through our online. Go to www.christsupreme.ca www.christsupreme.ca Click donate and follow the prompt. And your, your offering will get to us. We will acknowledge it and the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Let's thank God for today. Father, we thank you for today's Bible study. Thank you for helping us today. We pray, Lord, that your word will be effective in our lives in the name of Jesus. Glory be to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening to this message. We invite you to visit us at www.christsupreme.ca for more spirit-filled messages and for more information about the church. You can also call us at 647-884-8494. God bless you.